Doug, on a previous episode. I, I don't remember. I, de I deny everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> you encouraged men to read biographies of other great men with an eye to imitate. Um, I think you, I've heard you give that advice of if you're trying to figure out how to be discipled and you don't know where to go, grab biographies, right. find men to imitate. So the question is, who is on your Mount Rushmore of men who lived lives worth imitating, and uh, what would be the best biographies to follow them? Okay, so um, this is going to obviously not be exhaustive, but I, I can give a few examples. One of the, uh, probably the most influential writer, thinker, theologian uh, on me was C.S. Lewis. And fortunately, uh, and in a, in a subset of unfortunate news, there are many biographies or biographical treatments of Lewis. I would uh, I'd recommend his own spiritual autobi autobiography, Surprised by Joy. Uh, I would recommend um, uh, Alan Jacobs wrote a, uh, a book, uh, a biography called The Narnian. It was just really, uh, really good. Um, I would probably warn you, this is um, from what I've read about the book, but I would flag you off from uh, a biography by A.N. Wilson of, of Lewis. There are other, uh, there are other biographies. Uh, I think Clyde Kilby did one. Um, um, Alistair McGrath, I think, uh, did one. Uh, so, and, and there are numerous others. So C.S. Lewis would be um, okay. uh, one person. And then you, uh, and of course, when you read biographies, uh, you're going to discover that your heroes ha were sometimes odd or in feet of clay or, the, you know, that yeah. was weird. What You know, um, Lewis's marriage to Joy David would, would, would yeah. be a good example of what, mm -hmm. what was he thinking, you know. Right. <laughs> um, but, uh, but basically, uh, Lewis grows in my estimation. The more I learn about him, the more he grows in my mm. estimation, uh, with oddities here and with oddities here and there. Um, so th that would be one example. Another example would be um, uh, as a writer, not as a not as a human being, not as a thinker, uh, but H. L. Mencken was someone who had a, a um, great impact on me. A good biography of him is, as a writer, a good biography of him is by Terry Teachout, and I've forgotten the name of the biography, but okay. Terry Teachout wrote, wrote the biography. And then there's some autobi autobiographical books he did. There's one book called uh, My Life as Author and Editor, mm -hmm. and since I was reading that with a view toward writing and his dealings with other famous authors as an mm -hmm. editor and so forth, that was very uh, good. And he wrote a series of um, of autobiographical treatments of his younger years. Happy, there's three of them, Happy Days, Newspaper Days, and Something Other Days. Uh, so uh, that was for, for Mencken. Um, so is that, it's that kind of thing. You, what do you want to learn? What do you want to learn? If you're, if you're a leader, you might want to say, um, read a biography of Douglas MacArthur or, mm. or um, uh, the Duke of Wellington, or, you know, a, a leader of men, or if you, if you wanted to uh, start a business, read something about Henry Ford. Or, uh, do, you, do you have a favorite uh, politician, one that stands out, president or p political leader, ruler? Uh, the history? politicians I like are all, have all been dead for 300 years. Okay. <laughs> so um, th then they become statesmen. When they're, right, right, okay. when they're safe in the ground, then uh -huh. they're... They become statesmen. Um, I, I really liked uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. I really liked him on a number of levels. And I, um, and I don't remember, I've read a, a number of things. I know his general life story, but I forget how I know that. <laughs> okay. You were alive for I, I was alive it. for a chunk of it, yeah. yeah. How about, uh, do you have a favorite preacher? Yeah. Um, so you, you mean like Charles Spurgeon would probably okay. be um, the preacher I most appreciate who's um, in the annals of okay. history. Um, and, it, but Spurgeon is a, 
I've not read, I've, I've uh, read, um, there's a Banner of Truth book that was about the downgrade controversy. It was like a biography. I've read one treatment of him biographically. Uh, his sermons are kind of a little bit too Victorian for me, the, okay. a, little, a little flowery, um, but his lectures to my students is just yeah. magnificent. Mm -hmm. And you learn a lot about, he's the kind of person that you can get to know reading a book that he's writing about something else. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, how about favorite Puritan? Thomas Watson. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Thomas Watson would be my favorite Puritan. He is, out of all the, the, the Puritans are generally wholesome and good and, uh, you know, pointed, but um, Watson is, has got a verbal gift of making it colorful and vivid and um, uh, where he, he talks about, um, you know, people trying to deal with sin superficially. And he says it's like putting a silk stocking on a broken leg. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? it's, it's that kind of, he, he, he writes with that kind of punch and vividness. Do you have a favorite poet? Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm always trying to read a volume of poetry of, you know, uh -huh. of, some sort. of some sort. I'm currently working through the collected poetry of Robert Frost. And uh, so that's what I'm currently mm. working on. My favorite poet is probably C.S. Lewis. Mm. Uh, he, that was his ambition to be a poet, which he failed to do. But I think he was quite good. I think he was quite a gifted poet. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a volume of his poems called Poems, simply. Mm. And uh, so, yeah. Okay.